Planning Commission meeting. Do we currently have any public comments not related to any of our agenda items? As no. All right. Let's move forward to our approval of our minutes from the July 11th Planning Commission uh, regular meeting. Can I get a motion? I'll motion to approve. Second. Second by Chase. All right. Brent Linford? Yes. Lloyd Lentz? Yes. And Aaron Rooney? Yes. All right. Three of them. All right. Uh, moving forward, we're going to talk about our PC application number 24-006, discussion and possible action on a request for a special use permit to allow for a 10 by 24 carport in front of an existing garage for a property located at 3409 First Capital Circle. Uh, staff, could I get a report? Please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as indicated, this is a request for a special use permit for a 10 foot by 24 foot carport in front of an existing garage. Uh, the house is has a three stall garage and the carport they're proposing to put on the far south, southern side or the side where the uh, smaller um, garage is located. The, uh, the proposed carport will be metal, uh, but it'll be flat, uh, have a flat roof and no sides. So it'll be, it won't be exactly like that, but it'll be similar to that particular model where it's basically the four post flat roof uh, metal. The uh, zoning code, uh, if you remember, we've had a couple of these, but it uh, basically says that any structure, uh, accessory structure, whether it's carport, shed, that anything that's further the rear wall, further forward of the rear wall of a home has to go through a special use permit uh, before it can be approved or allowed. Uh, with that, also, there's no specific setbacks. So again, it's all approved through the special use permit. It obviously could not encroach into a right of way. But there's also other requirements that are um, required is the 50% rule. So any accessory structure cannot exceed 50% of the livable area of the primary structure. In this case, or 850 square feet, whichever is less. In this case, the uh, livable area of the primary structure is around th uh, third, uh, it's around, tw uh, sorry, uh, 2,141 square feet. So obviously they, they could have the 850 square feet. They're not, so they're in compliance with that. Also, the lot coverage is a uh, one of the rules. This is a 10,000 square foot lot, actually around 10,000, 19 square foot lot. And right now, or with the 35% lot coverage rule, they could have up to a building footprint of 3,507 square feet. In this case, the existing home is uh, at 3,157. With the addition of, if approved, the carport, it would increase it to 3,397, which puts it around 34%. So basically, if this were approved, they'd be at their max. Uh, they couldn't have any other type of accessory structures on the property. Uh, the factors to be considered, you saw in my staff report, uh, a lot of it in this case, or a lot of those questions don't really pertain to um, what we're talking about tonight. Uh, but couple things I want to point out. Uh, this is in the Mission Hill subdivision. Uh, there, is, there is not any existing uh, carports or accessory structures forward of the garage in the entire subdivision. There is a property that's a little ways down the street from this one that has a metal carport that's on the side towards the rear. It was actually there prior to even our current code uh, in that. So with most of these applications, uh, one of the critical, I guess, issues or, or considerations is basically character of the neighborhood. Uh, there really isn't a land use implication. Uh, it's not like a rezone where we could be having certain uses that may have an impact or not have an impact. This really comes down to you know, is it fitting and fit the character of the neighborhood or does not. Uh, 
So as you saw in my recommendation, uh, I had put if the Planning Commission feels that this is fitting for the character of the neighborhood, then you should move <coughs> forward and recommend approval. Uh, if you don't find that it's compatible with the character, then you should look to recommend denial of it. Uh, as uh, you know, this will move forward to the City Council, uh, regardless of the Planning Commission's recommendation. But with that, I'll leave it back to the Commission if they have any questions of me. Uh, if not, uh, there is the applicant that is here and also a, uh, another uh, gentleman in the audience. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so I, I, did, uh, I went out and I took a look at this property just to see if there are any other possible solutions, um, you know, whether uh, we'd be able to put it on the side or if they would be able to extend the garage backwards or any other options. And, you know, moving it to the side, there's the issue of the fire department being able to get around, that sort of thing. Um, and in back, they've currently got AC unit uh, generator, I believe. So that wasn't an option either. Um, you know, concerns with the neighborhood, it is going to be the first uh, carport, or it would be the first carport in the neighborhood. So it would be changing things. Um, but change is always scary uh, until we, you know, uh, cool things aren't cool until someone does it, right? I mean, at some point, there's probably a house in every neighborhood that is the first to have something like a carport, unless it was originally built out that way. But And, you know, trying to put myself in the shoes of someone else in this neighborhood, um, a lot of things that we hear about are, are pretty repetitive. And the big repetitive one is my land values, my land values, my land values. Well, uh, I got to speak with the homeowners about this, and the big thing they brought up was hail damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I really feel that I think when the neighbors, uh, granted that it's done as well as I see in this picture, uh, and, and judging by the quality of the property, I think that it will be. Um, I think the neighbors will want one too to protect their vehicles. It'll it'll save them money in the long run. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, me as a real estate appraiser anytime there's improvements made with any kind of reasonable method like this it's going to improve the overall value of the subject property and perhaps the rest in the neighborhood so i uh, think i agree with what you're saying i'd like to see it happen i agree uh, as long as it's tastefully done and good quality uh you know i I'm sure all of us have seen some crappy jobs done in this kind of thing. And this is kind of your rough idea, this picture included, right? It's good to me. The only thing I would like to add is uh, if the commission was looking to uh, approve the application, that you also put a condition that it is at least or uh, of the same color as the of the house or is architecturally compatible with the home, so we can make sure that it does truly fit in more than what it currently is. I think that's a yeah valid point. Yeah. So the color. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you can, ma'am, you can come up here. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, the color that you see on there is going to be black because the roof is black and my um, garage is white. So I'm thinking the aesthetics of it would be fine. It's Can like you show sleep. the house again, Aaron? So it's a white garage now. I just had my garage doors replaced. And then the roof is now black. Boy, I don't know about that one, Dan. We're not at HOA. <laughs> no, not, I'm just yeah. trying to no, make I was it just look saying nicer. that it would go with the aesthetics of my home. Oh, I, I trust that you guys are going to make it look wonderful. Oh, okay. I appreciate y'all going through the proper channels. There's a lot of people around town that, that do not do that, and uh, y'all are setting a great example. Thank you. I'm glad that I did that because I called. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other thing is we want to open it up just in case the public would like to speak. Public, would you like to have any comments? Uh -oh. I guess I'm the neighborhood. Um, 
my understanding, there's not dimensions on it, but if you had a 24 foot long carport, it's almost going to the property line. And if you look, and I know the city doesn't enforce subdivision covenants, but if you go back to the original covenants for the subdivision and uh, the guidelines that all the neighborhood bought the property based on, it was designed with the criteria and character of private garages and not carports. Uh, and so, in my personal opinion, a carport of this nature that goes all the way out to the property line almost is not in harmony with the existing neighborhood and it would be detrimental to the existing character of the neighborhood. Hmm. And typically, when you look at uh, and I know you're not the Board of Adjustment, but when you look at uh, uh, variants, or in this case, special use permits, uh, it's based on a unique lot consideration, whether it's a narrow lot it, compared to the other lots in the subdivision that would create a, a situation for an exception, or the topography is different than the other, but it's uh, basically the same lot as all the other lots in the <coughs> that platted in the neighborhood and typically financial concerns or personal preferences uh, do not merit awarding a variance or in this case a special use permit. So those are my opinions. I think it would be detrimental and not in harmony with the rest of the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your opinions. Uh, uh, commissioners, do you have any other comments? I believe I do. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. All second. Yeah. Brent Linford? Yes. Lloyd Lentz? Yes. Aaron Rune? Yes. Okay, so recommendation to approve 3 0. And just also for the record, this item will, uh, that uh, is a recommendation, so this item will go to the first council meeting in October which happens to be October 1st, I think, per my calendar. So that'll be the first Tuesday in October. Uh, Dan, do you have any other comments? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a few comments. Uh, one, I'd like to congratulate Kaylee Mills on her uh, promotion uh, to city council. But unfortunately for us, uh, I'd also like to say I think she's going to do a wonderful job. She's an asset to the city. And uh, it, she's a huge loss <laughs> to us. She always made me feel a lot more confident in our decisions. So uh, good luck to her and her future endeavors. Uh, next, I would like to uh, point out that we have vacancies on this commission, and we would greatly appreciate uh, anyone with the spare time or the desire to learn. Uh, we've got a great team here that will help you through and help you learn. When I first came on to the commission, I uh, didn't know what what the zoning code was. I didn't know what a C1 was or R1 or, or uh, setbacks or anything like that. So please don't be afraid. We need uh, people to serve the public and we will welcome you with open arms. So. And uh, they pay you with a pat on the back. It's a really good pat. <laughs> that, that open arms is my vision and mission statement for our two legs neighborhood community ministry. I love that statement. <laughs> you, yeah, I can, after the meeting, I can tell you. I'll let you. Yeah. Well, uh, basically, you, you can just put in an application, but I can explain the whole process. Yeah. You can find everything that you need at www.cityofguthrie.com. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, with that, I believe we're adjourned.